Game on. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is 8 Bit Flashback, and you're watching Glenn's Retro Show. Thank you for joining me on today's edition of Glenn's Retro Show. One of my favorite consoles of all time is the Sega Dreamcast. I mean, it's a very sad story. This machine came out in 1999, and uh, it was the best console Sega absolutely made, no questions asked. But for all the technology and everything this thing had, it is just a phenomenal console. That even from 1999 till 2020, this console is still a fun machine to play, great graphics, and people are still making lots of games for it and accessories. Now one of the things about the Dreamcast that unfortunately kind of killed it was uh, the PlayStation 2 when it had not only a CD-ROM but a DVD-ROM so you can actually play DVD movies. Now the Dreamcast used what's called a, a G-ROM or a Giga-ROM and that was kind of the copy protection that they had in here because the regular CD player couldn't really make a direct copy. You had to do, go through a special process to make uh, the discs uh, copied. And of course, you know, games for the Dreamcast did come on, you know, these special gig ROM uh, CD slash DVD. It's not really a DVD, it's really a CD that's been kind of expanded on to make it uh, a capacity more than a regular CD ROM would take. But like anything, CD ROMs do fail. Now, this is actually a second Dreamcast. My first Dreamcast uh, is stock, left it alone, didn't touch it. But I did want to get uh, a way to play games in case the drive did fail. And uh, unfortunately, the uh, optical media machines, their longevity is definitely not as good as a cartridge based system. So inside here, I actually have, you can kind of see it there a little bit, a modification, which I'm gonna talk about in this video. So we're gonna talk a little bit about this guy here, it's also been retro brighted and I've done a couple of videos on that and I'm really impressed at how well it came out. But I'm going to talk a little bit about this here. It's a 3D printed uh, cover for a GDEMU card that sits in here. They're not expensive. I mean, they can range anywhere from $50 for a clone up to I think about $200 to get the original. But um, the premise is the same on how they work. So I'm going to show you how I installed this, how I kind of made this uh, particular cover, which I really like. I tried a few. This one turned out to be personally the best one for me because there's no chance of anything falling in there and it's very easy to get to the card and then I'll do a little uh, gameplay with it and then also my friend Nostalgia is doing a really in-depth video on the GDEMU and I'll let you go over to his channel it's not posted yet but when he has it I'll put a link to it and you can see step by step what he did to actually get the games on here because it is not as simply as copy an ISO image to the card you do have to do a couple things first of all it does have to be formatted as FAT32 now, if it's not formatted as FAT32, it's not going to work. Uh, also, you do have to copy a special menu file over. And, you, again, you still can't copy games directly over. You have to make folders. So you have to have folder 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 50, 60, 70, 80, 100, 120. And each side, one of those folders, you would drop the image. And the program here will scan those 0, uh, not 0, but 1 through 100, 200, how many folders you have and get the names of the ISOs and put them in a menu. And it does take a little time from the load, but I'm getting way ahead of myself. First, let's get into just seeing how, you know, this installs. We'll do a little gameplay and get some final thoughts. Okay, what seems to be the new trend for me, uh, this part of the recording I'm actually doing once again outside. It's a beautiful day and uh, I just want to be outside for a little bit while I'm doing some of these projects. So this part, we're going to talk about how I actually installed the GDEMU in my Dreamcast. This is my second Dreamcast. This is the one I did my initial retro biting on that I got off of eBay and the retro biting turned out extremely well. So to get inside this machine, again, it's very easy. There's a screw here. One, two, three. You need to pop off your modem or LAN card and there's a fourth screw under here. So once you take those four screws out, you see here's a screw right here. Take out these four screws, just turn the machine right back over and you see the lid comes right off very, very easily. Now, the Dreamcast, again, is very easy to work on. I mean, this, this little guy here is just a phenomenal little unit. Now, once you do this, we just have to remove the, uh, the laser assembly. And there is one, 
two, and back here a third screw. Now when you take out these three screws, that's it, it will come out, but there is a connector in here, so be careful when you're prying it up, you don't wanna break the connector that mounts uh, the two together. Here's just a closer shot, there's one screw, two screws, third screw back here. Don't pull up on this, uh, the CD's on these rubber grommets to give it some shock value. This is where you wanna grab it from, down here, and again, be careful, because there is a, a main connector on this side. So let's lift it up gently, take your time, no rush. And when you pull this thing right off, you can see there with that connector, you don't wanna damage that. And if your CD works, uh, set the assembly works, it doesn't work, put it aside, you never know. People can always use it for parts if it is uh, in fact not working. But a lot of times when it's not working, either the lens here is dirty, or there's usually a potentiometer inside where you can adjust the, the laser focus and the, uh, the intensity. So a lot of times when it's not working, it's really something simple like that. But again, the point of this project is to get away from this entirely and go with a solid state uh, SD card or micro SD card. You can see once that's out, that's it. You put it aside and you're, you're fine, you're golden. Put it away. You don't need this anymore. So here's what we need to work with right now. So now you could technically just put the GDMU right in here. It'll sit in and that'd be the end of it. But I do have a 3D printer and I looked on Thingiverse and I found a, a design I think most people do tend to use, um, which I printed right here. So you can actually put in a, either three or five uh, SD cards, which is kind of nice. It blocks it in here so you don't, if you drop the SD card, it doesn't fall inside the unit. There's actually a back brace here. Now I had a couple problems. There was, a, there's a couple of these, like I said, there's two and three SD card designs, but apparently it's also ones with different thickness on here. And each one I printed, no matter what I did, it was either too high or too low. But, uh, you know, I did give it a try. The printout came out very nice. I was very happy how the printout came off my printer. And you can see, you can put in your SD cards here that are extra. You know, um, it's nice to have them right there if you need it. So here I printed even a secondary one because I want to make sure that the heights would be okay. And it just turned out that neither one were. So you see, you put it in here. Now, when you do put this in, there's actually only one screw that holds it in on the back down here. You screw your uh, GD uh, EMU into these screw holes here. And I guess potentially you could use this one here. There's a hole for it. But now the screws have been long enough to come with it. You have to go find your own and make sure you get the right size to go in there. I don't think it's really super necessary to have that one in there. And then it mounts obviously over to here. Just a couple of different shots to show you how it sits in the machine. That's the one screw that does hold it in place. And then when you screw your uh, GDAMU uh, into here, this holds it in place. And again, you're not gonna be throwing this machine around. It should be fine. But if you're really concerned, you can find a screw that's long enough to go down here. That's the same uh, thread pattern as your original screw. And you have two spots to hold it in place, plus the connector right there. Here was just a test fitting. I just put it, the, uh, the lid on just for a second, just so you can see how you know the unit would keep you from losing your card. Still gotta reach in here, which is one of the, the bad things about it. I mean, you got the, uh, the tray that opens up, but not all the way. So you do have to kind of reach behind to get the card and go behind to pull the card out. So it's still a little cumbersome, but again, this is what most people use. So I was like, okay, you know, I'll do that. And there's actually another part that prints behind here to keep it in place, which I'm gonna show you right here. So the other piece will clip into these areas right here. So I th again, I thought this was a, was a good design and there it is right there. You know, prints just keeps you again from losing your SD card uh, inside the, uh, the unit. It fits in really, really nice. It's a good fit. But it's hard to see right here. I got another picture later. When I put this whole thing in, I screwed it in here, screwed it in here, screwed it in here. Not all the way into the machine. This screw only went as far as the plastic, so it didn't go all the way into the machine. The one screw in the back. And it's a shame that I didn't make a 3D print come over and lip onto this, because this is actually one of the, the posts it should attach to. But the unit, if I could zoom in, maybe I could zoom in a little bit, you can see it right now. The SD card actually butts very slightly, but it does butt up against this. So the SD card would have pressure on it. So it didn't fit, I thought, very, very well there. And, you know, other than that, it looks really good. I mean, everything else looked fine. This, this particular one, I had one with the five card slots over here, and there's another one with the card slots over here. But neither one uh, really fit the, uh, the bill for me. You can kind of see it a little bit better right here. I'll zoom in a little bit more now with this one here. You can see the SD card, it looks, it, maybe in the picture it looks like it is, but it's not. It's actually a lip here. Too much of a lip to get an SD card into that, uh, that spot. I mean, you can see it, it would have been nice if it did work. You put your SD cards right there and that'd be it. But again, 
you'd have to reach into the machine to get to the SD card in kind of a weird way with the lid, the way the lid goes on, just kind of hard, and then hit the reset button over here to uh, then reset the device. Overall, I started thinking maybe this wasn't the best one to use. Just a couple of uh, different camera shots of it here and here. So you can see it a lot better here. Here's the SD card. Now it butts right up against this. Now you could put washers under here to lift it, but then it's not going to go in the connector on the other side. So this was just not going to work for me. Now, I'm not quite sure why neither one were at a good enough height for me to use, but uh, this one was definitely not going to work for me at all. So I decided to go with a different version. Uh, and this one actually I think I like a lot better. I did have some uh, SD card extenders, which is what this one's gonna need. So you use an SD card extender. So the SD card's right at the top of the lid. You have a spare and you have your reset right here. So overall, I think this was the better design. I'm actually happier I went with this version. But you do have to have an SD card extender to use it, which you see I did have one right here. So this is gonna get glued inside here. And there's a separate bracket. So this is the lower bracket. You're gonna put in your GDEMU here, then this screws into the sides. So you're gonna need an SD card extender for this particular one and four little screws to mount this to this part of the case. But again, what's really nice about this one is it sits right up top. So you open up this lid, your SD card is right here, easy to get to. Otherwise, you open this lid, you gotta kind of reach around and get it, and I'm sure it's fine, but this just makes it a lot better in my opinion. So I'm kind of glad the other two did not work. So these are the other two again. Uh, you can see the the lip is a little bit high on this one. This one was lower, but then it, it still didn't sit right in the connector. I don't know why, maybe my printer was a little bit off, but uh, the other one printed fine, but these two just did not work for me at all. So in this particular one, I'll put a link down below to this one. Uh, you will simply need again, uh, an SD card extender. This one goes from a standard SD card to a micro. I had to use a, an adapter here, but you can get, very easily get an SD card directed to SD card, or you can go SD card to micro, whatever you want. I prefer going to the full size, so you have the option of using a full-size card or a, uh, a micro if needed. You also print a, a button here. This is going to go into here, which is a way to hit the button. So this guy right here will press on this so you can reset the uh, the unit and go back to the, uh, the main menu of the, of the system. And there's the lower bracket, which will actually mount and attach to the bottom of the unit right here. And again, this was after it retrobited. You can see how well this machine was so dirty uh, previously, and now it looks... It actually looks better than my, my uh, original unit, which I'm currently retrobiting right now. The bottom on my my original looks like I made a couple more retrobites. The tops all, and everything else came out fine with one, but my other one has got a lot of brown, uh, so I'll have to do that one a couple more times. So you can see right here, I'm about ready to mount the GDEMU onto the bracket right here. So this hole is gonna go right here, this hole will go right here, and this hole will go right here. So the three screws you use to take out the G, the, uh, the original CD-ROM, I end up using one screw, two screw, and then this mounts to the case, the third screw. I would need to get an extra screw uh, to go in right here to mount all the way through. And I actually might have done it that way. I may have found a screw. I did this project a little while ago, so I might have actually found it. So you can see right here, um, it is mounted. The screws are holding it in right now. And uh, now it's ready to go inside the machine. Be careful when you put it in. This connector has got to go into here. Don't force it. It should go in nice and easy. And then just line up your holes on the other side. This part here requires a little more work because we're going to take this uh, SD card connector here, slide it in here and use some hot glue to hold it in place. This is a spot here for an extra SD card and of course our, our reset button right here. Just another shot. Now this is actually uh, towards the... Uh, the back of the unit, the back of the unit, and this is actually the front of the unit. So I'm just holding it in place right now. Uh, it slides right in, it was a perfect fit. And next thing I'm gonna do is just put in, you know, make sure it's, you know, right up, butt up against the front, and it is. It worked really, really well, fit in very nice. And there's the big Dreamcast reset button. My really bad uh, cell phone, again, taking a really bad uh, camera shot. But you can see there's a little gap right here to let air flow through, although I don't really think it gets very hot. But it's nice because the fan's right here. It blows through over the chips and just keeps everything nice and cool. So here it is. I just put some hot glue and we're about to dry. And uh, this will not go anywhere. The next thing I'm going to do is simply, I have a lot of extra uh, spool right here of the uh, ribbon cable. I'm just going to ribbon it back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Use a little hot glue then to hold that in place because you don't really need all the extra space. But you can see how well that fits in here. The, the finger area right here to get into the card, although it's a softy jack. Just got to press in on it on this particular one and it will eject the SD card slot. 
Again, there's my spare slot for an extra card and the reset button. So you can see I'm just folding it like, uh, you know, back and forth, back and forth. And I put a little drop of hot glue in here to hold this in place. And there'll still be plenty of uh, uh, slack here to you know, move this around and take it on and off. So if you can find a shorter cable, that's fine. Again, this is what I had lying around from other projects I had. And then you can see it's hot glue it's holding it in place. Just making sure it's staying out of the way of this reset button. They made the bottom all solid, so it doesn't have to be 100% accurate. You'll still hit that little button on the uh, GD EMU. Again, the ribbon cable's fine, just a little hot glue holding it in place, just so it doesn't, uh, well, doesn't get in the way. And you can see I got my two screws in right here, holding in the GD EMU on the bottom part. Now, you can see right here, there's one, two, three, four screw holes here, and there's one, two, three, four screw holes in here. So if you do print this one, you're going to have to get a couple of small screws uh, to mount this to the bottom plate here. Again, I had so many projects, I just found some screws that work great. So I did that, but you might have to get some screws if you don't have any on your own. So again, it's just a test fit. You can see that the top case slides inside the bracket of the GDMU card holder. And make sure everything is nice and flush. It, it actually fits quite well. It's really hard to mess it up, but I always like double checking everything. And then it's just take two screws on one side, screw these all the way into the flush on this side, and repeat the steps on both sides. And that'll make sure this is all one big solid piece, just like actually the CD tray removed. So basically, you would take out the one screw on the back and then just pry it off this connector. It'll come out just like your original CD tray. Of course, it's not a CD, it's an SD card. And the thing was really, really solid. And I used, uh, in my printer, I used 20% infill, which is kind of like what I normally do. I mean, you can go up to 100% and make this thing like a brick. But it's not necessary. 20% uh, is really more than adequate. If I do I ever do have a problem with it, which I don't think I will, I probably would only print this in a, you know, a higher uh, uh, percentage. Maybe go 30, 40, 50 percent on the bottom to make that strong. But to be quite honest, this thing felt pretty sturdy as it is. And again, you're not going to be tossing your Dreamcast around. You're going to be delicate with it anyway. And again, a nice blurry camera shot. But you can kind of see the whole assembly right here, which again kind of resembles the original CD tray you took out. That's a better picture. And I do like how that it's got a spot here for airflow to allow the uh, the fan here on the Dreamcast, which is actually on this side, to blow right through over these chips just to keep them cool. And there it is, the, uh, the completed assembly. I do like actually, uh, I wish I maybe made this orange. I'll reprint this in orange, but I do like this bu big button right here. So when you're playing games and you want to switch games, just open up your, do your tray door, hit this button right here, and it takes you back to your main menu of the GD EMU. And you can see I'm just doing a test fitting here, my SD card. I think I have a, a 256K uh, card there. And it slides right in. And it is a soft eject, so you just got to press it in and it will eject it out just fine. And uh, this is obviously not a real card, just uh, an adapter. But I'm just going to put it into my secondary slot just to make sure everything fit in okay. Now I did have to put a little sand, uh, file in here to sand down the inside of this. The card didn't want to go in the whole way. But again, that's just your, your printer and your printer settings. So I just made a couple of small adjustments in there and then uh, you know sand it with a file and then the card went in just fine so the next step now is to actually put it in the machine and again just the first thing you want to make sure is just line this up right here make sure this little plastic here for your power supply is pushed out of the way now i know a lot of people replace this power supply with a new one uh it's very very small but i don't like it because even though it's a small power supply unit you have a big brick on the outside that kind of ruins the aesthetics of a Dreamcast. If someone can make a replacement power supply that's like the Dreamcast original, everything's inside and just a you know a, a, a cable comes out the back, I'd be on board. Uh, I know Mandel Pixel had done one recently. We put in a small one, but I don't want to have a big brick on the outside of my Dreamcast. That kind of takes away from what makes a Dreamcast so cool, so small and self-contained. So me personally, I will not be getting that uh, unit. But if someone does make a complete 100% internal replacement for this, I would be more than happy to, uh, to put that in my, my Dreamcast. So here it is, sitting in right, uh, nice and perfect and level. The card sits in just how it should, nice and level and solid. Uh, we can see the fan right here. When it blows through, we'll get some airflow through here. And then we just got to put the one screw in the back. Again, I didn't have a screw, I don't think, initially for this one because um, it's going to be a lot thicker than it was when it was with the, uh, the CD-ROM assembly. But you can go to Home Depot, I'm sure, and get a, a screw that would fit with the right thread count so it doesn't damage the... Uh, the case as you screw that one in. So back here is the one screw hole we are going to use. You can see the screws holding in in the top case. So we're going to use that one last screw 
from the CD-ROM assembly to hold this in place. Between that screw right here and the mount, and then when the case gets put on place, because this kind of fits right inside the top of the case pretty good, it really shouldn't move. So just put that in again. Don't over tighten it. You'll know when you get it to a, a point. You don't need to really grind it down. Just make it so it's you know finger tight. You, otherwise, you'll end up cracking the uh, the plastic you used right here. And that's pretty much it. I mean, the machine's pretty much ready to go. Now, the thing with the SD card is the SD card uh, has to be kind of prepped. Now, with Windows 10, you can't do an easy FAT32. I'll put a link down below to a program that you can use because this has to be formatted in FAT32. It will not work otherwise. And also, each game has to go in a folder. Like, folder, you have to name the folders 1 or 01 and 02 and 03. And then you put your, your images inside each one of those folders. So it's not as easy as copying files directly onto the SD card. But again, it works. So once this thing is screwed in place, just really just put your top assembly back on. That's it. And you can see how that looks in here. The, uh, the one screw back here is holding in the unit. Then the, the connector is holding this part of the unit. Then all of this is sitting right inside. It's all beveled in here. Sitting in here really, really well. And it doesn't move. So it should be okay. Uh, but again, you can always put another screw in if you like. And I do like when you hit the open button and eject this. The card is facing you. You don't have to go and kind of go all the way in the unit, reach around, and it's down below. It's a bit of a pain because this is a soft eject. The eject inside the GDMU is not. So you kind of got to grab it and, and pull it out. And you still have a spare up here and easy reset to that uh, the GDMU button. So it just looks a lot better. And overall, it kind of looks like that's how it was supposed to be. With the black in here, like the original CD-ROM assembly. So overall, I much uh, more uh, like this version over these two, even though these two would have been fine. I'm glad they did not work because I really like this one much, much better. The only thing I may change is I may make this an, uh, an orange uh, button versus the gray. And just a closer shot, you can see the two card slots in here, and you can see how well that bevel kind of sits right in here, matches up perfectly to the unit. And uh, like I said, it really shouldn't move. So you put your four screws back in here, and then we have to get our, our, our modem. So we're going to put our one, two, three, four screws in. And then grab our modem or LAN card if you're lucky enough to have one of those. Though, in these days, you really don't need it. But if you have it, hey, congratulations. So put these things back together, and uh, that is really it. So here is our original assembly. Uh, the two ones that, that printed did not work, but our Dreamcast is now ready to try out. So let's now fire this little bad boy up and take a look at the GDMU. Again, you have to make sure that your SD card is formatted to FAT32, and you might need an external program with Windows 10 to do so. You need to make folders on there, 1 through 10 through 20, no matter how many games you have on there. And each image goes into its own respective folder. So let's say you had, I don't know, uh, I don't know Sega Sports Football. That'll go in 01. And then you have Fantasy Star Online. That'll go in folder 02. Daytona USA will go into folder 03 and so on. Okay, so we have my uh, Sega Dreamcast uh, set up right here on a regular TV with composite. And I have right here a micro SD card. This is a 128 gigabyte SD card I got for about $30 at Walmart and it seems to work pretty well so 128 gigabyte for I think it was like $32 I thought it was pretty good so we're gonna open up uh, our Dreamcast tray here and uh, we have our open slot so I'm gonna put this down into that slot see it's very easy to get to doing it this way of course you do have to buy the the extender but it goes right in you can leave it open if you want but I'm gonna close it for now we'll hit our power button and our Dreamcast should turn on now I still have to uh, modify the uh, the backup battery. This backup battery is probably, I don't know if it needs to be charged, it's probably dead. Um, so you always go back to the uh, the original data in the machine. We'll just go past that fairly quickly. Oh, the battery must have taken a little bit of charge. I was using it the other day, so I guess the backup battery worked enough to keep enough of a charge, but didn't come back to the time, which is pretty cool. So this is the loading screen. And of course, the more games you put on here, the longer this will take. I have that about 90 images on here, but not all of them worked because back in the day when I had gotten copies of uh, some ISOs uh, and I burned them to the disk, I discarded the uh, the RAR files because so I'm like, I'm never going to need them. I burned them to a disk. But later you find out that these uh, CDs don't last as long as you would think. You know, they get the uh, so like CD-ROM, you know, rot and it just stops reading or whatever. So some of the discs, obviously, when I try to back them up back to an ISO, 
didn't work. So some of these games will say, you know, uh, uh, something like, you know, I can't read it or uh, a weird folder name. We'll see it in a second. But the ones that did load come up fine. Now there are um, quite a few great classic games on the Dream. I mean, I can't think of too many that weren't a fun game. But we'll just take a look at a couple of here and again for more details on setting up the SD card and your Dreamcast, which is really not too hard at all. Uh, Rostalge has been working on a video, so I figured I'd leave that uh, for him. He's very good at giving you very easy, detailed instructions. And we can see it's still loading here. This is, uh, I think, 92. So here we go. So you can see things right here, uh, all the games you know that are on in, in these folders. You can see all these came out okay. But if you keep scrolling down, so again, you got to make a folder, you know, one. It's not zero one. Just make a folder one. It made it zero one. And some of these discs, uh, I'm not sure where it pulls the image from. Maybe it's in the firmware because I didn't put any images on them. See, some are blank, uh, you know, but others will have, whoop, go back up one. Some will have like an image. I'm, I'm guessing it comes in with the image file when you download that. Here we go. Here are the ones that say unsupported disc, empty folder. That There's actually uh, an image in there. I'm guessing though, when I tried to back up that particular disc, that something didn't work out right and thus I got that error message. So again, you can go right to this menu. You know, I got a ton of games on here. We can keep scrolling a whole, a whole bunch that didn't uh, back up right. But you know, when you get something uh, and you, you don't save the originals, that's kind of what happens. Let's just pick a game. Now, now I never really played this in the arcade, so I'm gonna try this one right here, Rush 2049. So I'm gonna go press my A button to play. And it should load uh, pretty much equal, if not a little bit better, than off the uh, the CD-ROM or G-ROM, I should say, G-ROM. It's just such a shame if they had spent a little money and actually used a DVD mechanism, it would have raised the cost. The Dreamcast was very affordable when it came out, but it would have raised the cost a little bit. But it probably would have saved it. Let's get into a game. We'll play it real quick. It's the stop button here. Do one player. Just play. Single race. Yeah, that's fine. And uh, you know what? Why not? Take that car. I still think the graphics hold up very well today from a machine that was you know, designed pre-1999. The uh, Dreamcast originally was going to use... Um, Ah. Trying to think of the name right now. Uh, da, 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 da. See, Gun can't think and drive at the same time because they crashed his car just like that. Voodoo, there we go. So, originally, the Dreamcast was going to use uh, Voodoo technology graphics. Uh, they got into talks, they had NDAs set up, but uh, they ended up going with uh, the NEC Power VR. And I'm kind of glad they did because I don't think that the uh, Voodoo graphics would have held up this well where the, uh, the power of the R really does. I mean, this thing just looks great. And if I remember right, the only real issue they had, like everyone seems to have back in the day, was uh, getting enough chips uh, to manufacture consoles. You know, all the manufacturers, yeah, we can supply you enough chips. And then I, don't, I think there wasn't. Um, the Dreamcast sold very, very well. Uh, when it first came out. I mean, I have to admit, initially I was uh, pretty turned off with Sega, with the, you know, the Sega CD32X, and then the, uh, the Saturn's performance. So I didn't initially, at launch day, pick this up. I got it about a week later, because I basically walked into a Babbage's, and I saw uh, NFL, was a Y2K, uh, and I was just blown away. I'm like, those guys look, it looks real. I mean, I was totally blown away by the visuals. And I'm not a sports guy. If anyone knows me, I'm not a, you know, a sports guy. But I love playing the, uh, the uh, sports games from Sega, the Y2K series. They're just fun games. And yes, this is how I drive on the real street, so. I always found that the, uh, the Dreamcast controller, I know a lot of people hate the controller. The only thing I didn't like about it was that the uh, 
the cord, because this, yes, is a time when consoles had cords, faces you and it wraps around the clips to go the other way. I always found the control to be pretty comfortable to hold. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, the uh, analog stick on the Dreamcast uses uh, you know, similar technology to my spinner. I might be wrong because I know they kind of went back and forth. I might use the Hall Effect or I might, I'll have to open this thing up. Uh, I do know that there was originally a Kickstarter, oh my god, uh, that they redid the controller and I might want to get that because it does look nice. But again, I never really had any fault with the actual Dreamcast controller itself. So if you want to stop playing the game, all you got to do is, again, you can leave this open, you don't have to ever close it, but I'm going to hit this button here, which is basically a 3D printed way to get to the little one button on the unit, and allows you to reset the game and go back to your main menu. Now, of course, in a real Dreamcast, you'd have to, you know, close the door uh, to make sure it reads okay, but... It doesn't really matter here, but I'll close it anyway, because it's just proper to do so. So again, we wait a little bit uh, to get back to the, um, the menu of all the games. And another thing I always liked about, you know, the, the controllers, I always liked the, uh, the MMUs. I mean, they didn't really do too much on them, uh, but I did like how they had a little display on it. I thought it was really forward thinking. You know, it's got two separate bays, so you can put a rumble pack down here or something like that. But this is the only thing I really hated was that the controller came with the wire down here and you had to do that to make it go forward. I just don't understand why it didn't come out here to begin with versus that. Uh, I don't know. Weird. But again, the, the actual hold of the controller, I don't mind at all. Let's take a look at one other game on here, see something we can pull up here. Another game I always loved was uh, the Unreal Tournament, so I'm going to go into that game. Uh, it was just, I thought it worked really well with the, the controller because I haven't played this probably in 15 years, easily. <laughs> but I used to pop this one in all the time. Um, and it was multiplayer, but I, of course I always played against just the AIs. Just get this game going there quick. I thought this was a really, really, even as, as a single player, it's a fun game, the deathmatch. Now you can see, normally with an SD card, that should load quicker. So it's very similar to what you would have gotten on the, uh, on the actual machine, with the, the drive. So the Dreamcast controller, I think, works pretty well here, using an analog stick to, uh, to move around. I used to be, I'm not gonna lie, I was really good at this game, but I am definitely not gonna be good at it now. Someone's taking me out already! Ah! <laughs> oh, right in the head. But when you wanna get back into the game, it's pretty quick.
So this is just a great way to, ooh, bring the face, oh, he got me. You know, this is just a great way to make sure your Dreamcast works for years to come. And I'll just give you some of my final thoughts. Okay, so you can see it's really not hard to do this. The, the Dreamcast not only is a great console to play, but even to get inside and work on is very, very simple. Sega took a lot of time to make this thing. It's just a shame it didn't, it didn't take off more than it did. It is such a good console, not only to play, but even to go in and work on. And it's very easy to open this thing up. It's very easy to put in the GDEMU. Um, the part of the more complicated part is setting up the GDEMU to actually play the games uh, more than anything. But uh, the other hard part is you can't, you know, you can't make direct backup copies of your own uh, GDEMUs. Uh, that has to be done in a special way. So these would probably have to get, you know, from other means, but you try and keep the ones that you have here so you're not, you know, breaking any, you know, I would say copyright, but they don't make the games anymore. But they're actually not too expensive. You can get these inexpensively, but the problem is you can buy these, but you can't back them up. You have to find the backup from somewhere else to put on the SD card to load on here. But uh, if you guys never had a Dreamcast, I highly recommend you get them. They're not too terribly expensive, maybe 50 to 80 bucks for you know, a console, maybe $100 complete. But they're totally worth it. Um, they, there are emulators like the Pi 4 that can kind of do it pretty well. But again, nothing beats the real machine. But even so, you might want to invest in a, uh, you know, a card over the original uh, CD-ROM drive. Now the good thing is, since this thing is so easy to open up and work on, there's no reason why you couldn't swap between the two. I mean, it's take a little bit of time, but you could put your original optical drive back if it works and play the original media. But I did buy a second one, so I didn't have to do that, but I did save the original one just in case. So I do hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like, share, subscribe, tell your friends. Of course, I'll put a link down below to Estalgia's video on how he did his machine when that's available. But again, I want to thank you all for watching. If you want to remember, no matter how you do it or any way you do it, remember to game on. the arcade fan page remember don't admire people too much they'll disappoint you
sit, blue, blue, sit. Good dog. <laughs>